put this in my pocket. We are good. All right. All said. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me um, here at Tech Tuesdays. I was not aware of Tech Tuesdays before, but uh, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised that it that it's existed uh, for the last two years. And unfortunately, I hadn't heard about it before. But uh, uh, this is kind of a godsend for us because this is the type of um, collaboration space that we are looking for uh, to be a part of. Uh, my name is Juan Carlos Suarez, and um, my day job has nothing to do with technology. There is technology involved, but I'm in real estate, um, and we just manage property down here in the valley. We're, I'm one of the owners of Dormit Apartments, so basically we house people, and we're trying to have the technology within that. But that is my day job, and that's actually pretty boring to me until I get to the volunteer part where I get to have fun and do things like what first is. And is, did you put an automatic or? No? Let me, let me check so I can do it manually. There it is. So this is what I do in, uh, now for, for as a volunteer in my spare time. I live in San Antonio. I, w I lived here in the Valley for about 10 years. I've been involved in nonprofits for quite a while. Where, where, do you, where do you turn off the timing? Hmm? I don't know that function. It's all right. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> I think if we go max, and then where's the? Estrella. Hmm? Estrella. So it's not previous. So like start start the presentation. Huh? Yeah. No. Are we in the slideshow tab? Yeah. Slideshow tab. This one. Okay. All of them have it. No. Yeah, they, it looks like they all have the. Uh, it looks like it has an animation. Three narrations, yeah. Use, use timings? No. Like, slideshow, use timings, take, uh, click it off, no? Which one? Slideshow, use timings? Yeah. Is it? We can try it real quick. Here. Ah. Hopefully, you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention I don't do technology throughout the day? <laughs> no, but I am an engineer. I, I do know about this stuff. I do. I can understand it. I did graduate way back in the early '90s, so I did not. Um, when the whole technology thing s snowballed up, I was already in in analog, not in digital. So I, I could adapt easily. But this is a kind of program that, that I like to get involved with because this is what's bringing up the new generations up into the, new, you know, the digital age or the, the actual, actually technology age. And um, what I'm involved with is called FIRST, for Inspiration and Recognition in Science and Technology. What it is, it's a robotics program from elementary to high school. It was founded by a guy named Dean Kamen. And he's an inventor, serial entrepreneur. He, invest, he invented the, the insulin pump, uh, the Segway, th a lot of things that are pretty cool and technology oriented. And uh, it's an organization that is headquartered in uh, New Hampshire. And again, the programs are from K to 12. Basically the mission, I am gonna read it um, because I don't have it memorized, but the mission is to inspire young people to be science and technology leaders by engaging them in exciting mentor-based programs that build science, engineering, and technology skills, that inspire innovation, and that foster well-rounded life capabilities, including self-confidence, communication, and leadership. That's a full, uh, that's a mouthful, and that's a full paragraph to read. But the, the gist of that is, it's not a, just a robotics program that we're, that we're promoting. It's a whole human program that we're developing with these students. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Well, before we go on to the actual program, let me show you a little video that can put it into a little bit better words. And we can see that here. And this will give you a good idea visually of what the, 
what the program is. And then actually when I talk about the actual program, then you can, you can actually understand it better. Is the sound done? Yeah. This is the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl of smarts, that is. It's a life-changing competition. It's kids having fun, competing, working together to dream up, design, and build robots. It's just an exhilarating feeling. It's like I'm using power tools. They're having the hardest fun they'll ever have. And they're becoming our next generation of engineers and innovators. First, come out. For inspiration and recognition of science and technology, my teachers were some of the greatest influences on my life by challenging and trusting me. These mentors got me to understand that I could do anything I put my mind to. First mentors are changing kids' lives every day. Professional engineers, teachers, parents, teaming up with young people not just to build robots, but to build confidence and self-respect. I'm around people that I can get along with, that we can talk computer lingo with. First was founded by one of our greatest inventors, Dean Kamen. Dean saw that kids mostly look up to sports heroes and movie stars. So we said, if we've got a culture now that's obsessed with sports and entertainment, let's inspire these kids to be big thinkers the same way Shaquille O'Neal can inspire them to spend dozens of hours a week bouncing a ball. Our president agrees. Scientists and engineers ought to stand side by side with athletes and entertainers as role models. And here at the White House, we're going to lead by example. We're going to show young people how cool science can be. 250,000 kids aged 6 to 18 compete at all different levels. In two first Lego leagues, the first tech challenge. And at the high school level, the first robotics competition. The only difference between this sport and all the others is every kid on our teams can turn pro. There's a job out there for every one of these kids. Robot! Students who take part in FIRST are 50% more likely to go to college and twice as likely to major in science or engineering. I definitely know that I want to pursue engineering. Once they've tasted what the power of knowledge is, that it can be fun and rewarding, they won't go back. There's no doubt, FIRST works. 10 or 15 or 20 years from today, some kid in those stands will have cured Alzheimer's or AIDS or cancer or built an engine that doesn't pollute. Look at these kids. They're, they're the future. I feel like I can go and do anything I want to do because of this program. Someone took the time to guide and inspire me. It changed my life. Take some time. Go to usfirst.org. Well, it is kind of hard to follow Morgan Freeman and kind of speak better than, than he can about the program, but uh, they touch all the points about the program is, my, my favorite part of it is the mentor-based program. What that means is that we do take industry professionals, engineers, academics, and they come in and they mentor the students. They do not touch the robot, they don't, they're not hands-on on the robot, they, they mentor them to guide them as to what to do. It is the students that actually build the robots, run the robots, and program the robots which is kind of cool. And it, it creates that bond between the mentor and the students and that respect that they did it with their help, but they, they're the ones that did it. And um, basically what the program goes, he goes junior FLL, FLL, FTC, FRC. And like in any engineering uh, class or, or program, there's always uh, letters. What it basically means is first Lego League. Why Lego? Because Lego is a company that started with the, the brick or the actual brain and with the Mindstorm, and, and from there it kind of evolved, and that's the one they adopted for, for uh, this program. Um, it's been going on for over almost 30 years. It's going to be in its 30th year pretty soon. So it's been going on for quite a while, and it's been 
evolving all this time. And um, the, way, the way they describe it, it is, it is a Super Bowl of, uh, of engineering or, 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 or of STEM, basically. And what does that mean is it, it takes the, the, what called the, the excitement and the fun of a sporting event and puts it into science and technology. And I've personally been to the world championship and to the regional championships and the local championships, and you do find the electrifying energy from the students that get into it, and they really get into it, as you see in the video. Now, the way it's structured, it goes from elementary school, they go into the, into the smaller robots. Uh, basically, the, the younger kids, which is the junior FLL, that's like a science fair, tabletop. And um, for example, last, uh, about two weeks ago, we had one of the events here. We had 15 teams uh, signed up. Only two showed up this time. But uh, last year, we had 15 signed up and 13 showed up. And that's an issue that I'm going to uh, say that now, because that, we're going to discuss that in, in a few slides, and as to what we're doing down here in the valley. But you have the, the, the kids on the tabletops, you have the tabletop uh, presentation, and the, the, basically the robot is, has to be something that moves built out of Legos. That's a junior FLL. That's elementary school age. That's very introductory. They do one presentation. They're not judged, but they're reviewed, and they go home with a prize. When you get to the second level, which is FLL, first Lego league, that's grades four to eight. That's elementary and, and beginning of uh, middle school. And usually, sometimes, most of the middle schoolers do that program. Um, what that is, it's a four by eight table. And they have a, a, a Lego brick or a Lego Mindstorm robot that will be built out of Lego pieces. And they have to do certain tasks. And it's in a field like the size of this table, a little bit bigger. And they program the robot. And it has to do run around and do different tasks. That is very contained. It's very precise. and. Um, I had to teach them how to work as a team and, and actually program the robot and, and do those tasks. Together with the robot, though, that, that is a point where it, where it goes away from just being a, a robotics program. They also have to do a presentation of something that has to do with a the theme of that season, of the season, and they'd have to do, come up with a product or something to fix something of, along that theme and then present it to the judges, and they're judged on it. And they also have to um, do another presentation that has to do with what we call our core values of, of, the, of the program, one of them being gracious professionalism, which means that they compete against the other teams, but they also help the other teams. So it's, it's kind of a, a cooperation thing that we're teaching from that, that early age. And, um, and at the end of the day, some of them win. The robot will win the highest points, but some of them will get uh, also the awards from over here. So it's not the best robot that wins of the day, the one that got the most points. It's an overall score, or overall kind of subjective evaluation of the whole of the team as a whole, as, as we do the the, the the team rankings basically, no, at that level. And no, everybody doesn't get a medal. It's it's not like uh, youth baseball or soccer. Not everybody gets a medal. We do, we do have the top ones that do make it to the next step. From the qualifiers, they make it to a regional, to a super regional, then to the world championship. Here in the Valley, we're holding the, the regional qualifiers, or the qualifiers to go into the regional, which is in San Antonio. The next step up is FTC. That's where it starts getting very serious about building the robot. Because there, you do have um, electronics. You do have mechanical skills. Plus, you also have um, scientific process skills, which means there's one of the things they're judged on is an engineering notebook where they have to document everything they do throughout the whole build season. And um, that's where it ties in that it's not only the robot, it's a whole process that, that we judge. Now, the, the robot obviously has to do tasks that it's assigned. That FTC from grade 7 to 12, and we'll see teams in middle school that are in that program. We'll see teams in high school that are in that program. They usually start in FLL. And after one season of that, they, they, I mean, they feel confident enough that they jump to the next one. And they will want to jump to the next one because it's a little more challenging. Then the, the FLL starts being a little easy on them. And, but then you have the new kids coming up. And that's how the teams keep, keep growing. Uh, the FTC is basically a 12 by 12 field. It's a field the, the size of this right here. It, um, we have four teams at once, two alliances, two and two. And 
when you put the robots and have to do certain tasks inside like a ring. It's not a fighting robot thing that we grew up with way long time ago. They don't have to break each other. And they have to perform the tasks despite the other robots being there. So they have to cooperate both with their alliance, which in a few matches may actually be competing against them, versus the other two teams that are there. So, so there's a lot of uh, maneuvering and coordination that, that the kids have to go through to actually compete in the field. And again, that program also has a judging component, um, which has to do with a notebook and how they, they, they operate it as a team. Now, the big boys is FRC. That is usually the, the upper end of high school. And as the programs um, advance, you'll have a lot of teams at FTC. When they, when they get really good at that, then they start going into FRC. The more veteran programs in, in the schools that have uh, FRC is because they've been established for quite a few years, or you have uh, uh, somebody that is very dedicated to make sure they do it. Um, uh, uh, well, that the, the, the program survives and, and actually is actually on task. Those are big robots. Um, they are, I can't remember the dimensions, but they're in a basketball sized field. And they have to do, again, also different tasks, two teams against two teams, and you switch alliances around in the competition. And they have to do different types of uh, things. So the ones that you saw the most in the competition were actually the FRC in the video. The ones where the balls are being thrown and the, the, the big walls, that's, that's the first robotics competition. That one, that's when I started getting involved, and just, I'm, I'm, I should have introduced this. When I, I got involved because my kids started doing these programs right here uh, a few years ago, and they went through a progression. They never got to FRC. And from those competitions, I got to meet the people in, in San Antonio that, that actually run the show. I was invited on their board, and I'm now a board member for the, the Alamo region, which is from uh, San Antonio down to the valley. And um, when I actually saw what that was about, the, ro uh, the robotics was about, is I see kids in high school doing things that I did not do in engineering school way back, way back then. I'm, I'm trusting that now that those things are taught. But um, it's incredible what these, guy, these kids in high school are doing. Uh, electronics, mechanics, programming, you name it, in terms of engineering. And they're, they're actually physically, and it's the kids that are doing it with mentors, but it's, it's the students doing it. And um, so that's, that's a larger program. This is, a, again, kind of a, um, a mapping of how, how it starts. It's a, it's a progression, and that's how it was designed. Again, the words gracious professionalism and co-opetition, that's part of the, the core values. And that is, that is actually very, very stressed at all levels of, of the whole process of being involved. <laughs> One of the major awards is called the Inspire Award. And it doesn't go to the, like I said, to the robot that scores the most, but actually to the team that has the best outreach to other teams, the team that actually can go and mentor other teams. When you see students helping out, when you see them doing things that are, are you know, that, that, that you would like the real world to be doing. And that's one of the things we're hoping. We're hoping when, when these students go out to, to the real world, or to the outside world and, and get a job in a company, they're going to have these values to share. So again, that's the progression first uh, from the little guys all the way to the big robots. And uh, this, I have two slides of results. They mention a little bit of results, like the, the students that are involved in first in this program in particular, they, they did measure it. And um, there's a couple measurements. One is the ones interested in doing well in school, you do see the percentages, up high 80, 80s percent of, that want to do better in school than when the, versus when, when they were not in the program. Then more interested in going to college, so it's in the high 80s, 90s. The, so this is, you can call it a, a college readiness program, a college uh, promotion program. But here in the Valley, we, we, we're, we're focusing it also a little bit differently. And uh, then all the, basically the academic, no, the, the STEM fields, going into a STEM field down here, major in engineering, 41%. And um, what, what we're trying to do here in the Valley is we're not stressing the college side of it. Why? Because the way we see this program down here, and with the way we, it's, it's, it is, it's actually a feeder program of students into science programs, into industry, into society, basically creating 
uh, and filling the, the dire need in society today for STEM and engineering and, and those fields. And um, I didn't see many students, uh, I mean, I saw there was a fraction of students, but you guys, if you're engineering students, you're at the best time in history to be an engineering student for the prospects that you have in terms of employment or opportunities. Um, this is basically a skills improvement. So there's, I mean, there is a correlation in terms of skills improvement and the programs. Okay. Uh, the, the bottom part is basically the numbers. Just to get a breadth of the numbers, uh, 400,000 youth participants worldwide, and it is, I stress, it's a worldwide program. Uh, the World Championship is, has been in the, is in, the, in the U.S. It has been traditionally in St. Louis every year, every, every April, it's in St. Louis. But now, as of uh, 2017, they're going to split the, because of the explosive growth in teams, we're going to have two World Championships. If you can, and it's not going to lead into one championship, it's basically two World Championships. And that's because of the number of teams. One's going to be in Houston, which is the one we're, we're, we were concerned about. And there's another one, I think it's in Detroit. So all the teams that qualify and start moving up in the regionals will end up in one of those two uh, championships in, in 2017. As of this year, it's going to be in St. Louis still. So that's basically the numbers you're looking at in, in terms of people that are, that are involved. Um, this is some of the, these are some of the national sponsors. When I was at the World Championship last year, you go to the, you have the, you know, the, the teams where they have the pits, you have the competition area, then you have the, the corporate area where you have all the booths of all the, all the companies that, are, that, that support the program. And basically it's a Rolodex of who's who in, in, in technology when you're there, or engineering, I would call it. And um, so basically you have, uh, that's uh, the, the national supporters. In terms of Alamo, uh, which is uh, the San Antonio area, these are the, the, the companies that support us. And by the way, Time Warner is here. They also support us in, in the Alamo, and then locally, they were supporters. Um, basically, Rackspace is a huge, a huge supporter. It's one of the major supporters in San Antonio, and they're actually one of the ones that are driving the, 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 the tech ecosystem there. Um, OK, here. Now, to get to the RGV, what, what, what's going on in the RGV and why, why am I presenting this today and, and why not two years ago, one year ago? Basically, FIRST has been around for over 30 years. Here in the Valley, there have been teams in the last few years, there have been some random teams. And uh, as far back as, I don't have all the history of, of 2009, 2010, 2011, uh, there were some teams that were here. There was two events that were held here in 2010 and 11. Like Scott events, there were a few teams that got together that did it, but then it disappeared. It, it, it went away. Why did it go away? Because during those years, there was a strong push for uh, sponsorship and for grants from the, the Texas Workforce Commission. They got their grants, they competed, the, the teams got together. We, they, uh, somebody created an event down here, and they had their event. And that was it. Some of the teams, I, I, can't, I don't remember how many teams went up to compete in San Antonio for a super regional event to qualify. But then it went away. Why? Because there was no funding. That's the number one uh, reason I hear from the, from the teachers. But then if you dig a little bit, there, was no, no, there were no, champ, no underground champions. Why? Because four years ago, there wasn't the push that there is today from the parents, from administrators, from society to get these programs up and running. And um, I think we're right, we're, we uh, are riding the wave that when I was asked to actually come down to the valley and see what happened with, uh, with the teams and see how we could get it kick-started, well, I wasn't the only one doing that. And we spoke a little bit about that. It's, it's kind of the perfect wave. It's like um, the group Tech Tuesday. You started two, a couple years ago? Yes. And uh, who, who can say who is the one that started the, the whole technology thing in the valley? You can't pinpoint to one person. Because it's all independent efforts all around. And all of a sudden, those efforts start wanting to get more involved and more involved and more involved. They're getting more serious. But then they, uh, there comes a time where they come together. And that's what happened to us. Basically, there was a thirst from parents and students and, and teachers who say, we want robotics. Why, why do we want robotics? Because I heard my nephew did it in, in, in Houston. I heard my, my cousin did it in Dallas. And why don't we have it in the Valley? 
or you see it on TV or you hear it somewhere. Or maybe my nephew, like somebody mentioned, my nephew did it a few years ago, but it hasn't really restarted. We haven't found a team. So there was this crescendo of, of, of people wanting to do it, but they just didn't have anybody to do it with, basically. And uh, the only way teams would get together before we, we got our effort going was teams would, would form. We would form a team. And, the, and I can per, put a perfect example of a team from the Valley that has been persistent, and it's a Girl Scout. It's a Girl Scout team. Why? Because you have a champion. You have a leader there that is continuing that program. Even as a, some of the Girl Scouts graduate or, or move on to a normal program, you have the other ones coming up, and the program continues. But you have a champion in there. And they would go up to San Antonio, and they would go to the qualifiers up there, and then they would do, do, do their thing. There was nothing down here for them to compete in. So that's when we came down, and we created in, 2000, in the 13-14 season, we decided to have one event, one qualifier event in the, in, the, in the basic category, which is FLL. So we had 10 teams in FLL, which is uh, the, the middle school, the, the, the Lego-based. And um, we had one event over about 100 students. We had 10 teams, that well, average 10, 10 students a team. And none of those teams actually, had, um, well, they advanced to championship, but they didn't quite get there. Then, then the 2014-15, which is last year, we had two events, and where we had 34 teams, over 340, um, 340 uh, um, students involved. And it says zero advanced to championship, where we did have teams advancing to, to championship. Uh, but we had, we had a couple, and, but I don't have the data right here. But then this year, what did we do this year? We were building, we were building our events. This season is when we went from one event to get, you know, start getting known by, by the administrators, by the teachers. And now we decided, okay, now we're going to have the events of the progression, the, the, the full progression. So we have an FLL event and we have an FTC event. When we open those doors, because we want to have, have events here. Otherwise, if you, if you force people to go qualify north of the checkpoint, it just, drop, you know, it just drops off. It's not, it's not feasible to have that, that amount of uh, students be able to go up there. So we had the two events, and it just skyrocketed to over 70 teams, over 700 students, and now we have 14 teams advancing to, to, um, to what do you call it, to the championship. We had the championship for the, the medium robots uh, last weekend. We had six, six, of the, six of those 14 teams are in that, in that category, and one of those teams advanced to the super regional, which now they have the chance to go to world. And that's an actually a rookie team. What that means is it's a first year team from a McAllen High School, which is a row high school. And um, how that team happened is uh, four students, they won a robotics, they, 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 one of the teachers kind of, it's not, not actually a teacher, it's one of the, the, I don't know what you call it, an administ administrator that is involved in part of the math area. And he said, well, I want to look into robotics, there's something here that my school district is not doing, it, but let me check it out. You knew the, th the four kids wanted to do it. They got together, heard about us, recruited, and now they're going to, to championship. And that's actually basically the story almost every, uh, almost uh, a lot of the teams. You have somebody that hears about it, it's, uh, 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 an administrator, or actually a teacher, gets it going and keeps going. And that's, that's in some school districts. What, what else did we do in 2015, 16 to get started? Well, we ended up recruiting what will be our local um, affiliate, which is the City of Far IT Department, uh, the Innovation and Technology Department, uh, is going to be our, our, our anchor down here. What, what does that mean? So now we have a physical space in Far where we have a field where th uh, teams and students can actually go compete. And it's open to the, the whole valley. It's, va it's valley-wide. We're probably going to open a second one in Harlingen for that, that other end of the, uh, end of the spectrum. And um, so everyone can have that opportunity. Uh, what else did we do? So we could create that champion. We did get the funds from uh, New Hampshire for the, the headquarters. So we could have a senior mentor here. We, I talked a lot about, about mentors, but there's a, there's a whole mentor program that, that is actually funded by FIRST. You have one mentor leader. He's the one that kind of oversees the teams. We hired one for down here in the valley. So that, that one actually got the ball rolling a lot more. And, um, and basically, when you, when, you, when you see that effort uh, and the, the fruit of that effort, that's, that's what happens. You create the events, 
People have the thirst for it, and they come and they do it. Let me see what else. Why is this important to you? Well, this is mixed between business leaders, community leaders, and students. But basically, getting involved as mentors and you know, getting a team together, volunteers, uh, or volunteer at the competitions. Now, why is this important again? Because now you have a pipeline of students, of talent coming up to your companies. The kids that are going to be involved in these programs are the ones that are going to be coding for you, are going to be the engineers going off to UT. And what we focus a lot is actually, well, what I meant is not other things, college. We have a huge manufacturing base across the border in the Maquilas and even here on this, this side. And that, that manufacturing base needs a pool of talent coming in. And they're not hiring all, all uh, college graduates. They need a lot of high school graduates with actual certification degrees and with the technical, technical skills to go in there and operate uh, machinery, which nowadays it's not mechanical. It's mechanical, but it's run by computers, basically. So they need people that can understand that and be able to, to operate that. So that's a dual. Maybe college, maybe not college, but it's still a technical uh, career path in the future. That's what, why we think we're, we're being uh, helpful in that way. And um, I guess I'm going to open it to questions. Uh, I do want to say we're by no means the only robotics program uh, around. There's a few other robotics programs. I feel we are the one that has the, the most comprehensive, but we're only complementary. I think there's, um, there has to be a cooperation or, or, a, or a kind of a fitting together of all the different robotics programs. And I'll put one example is UIL. Um, Everybody's familiar with what UIL is uh, in the high schools. Well, now they have a pilot program where, where they're going to have um, a robotics uh, competition within UIL. The, the two platforms for robotics, one is FIRST, which is this program, and the other one's another one called BEST, which other, uses another architecture. But they're the ones that are going to be UIL. Once you get that going, I mean, the schools are going to be asking more of, for more of this. Our season goes from August to March, so this, the, the rest of the year is open for other programs and, and without it uh, to be able to be coordinated. If there's any questions? Yes, sir. Any audience? Is this just limited to students? Uh, is there any plan on, on getting like adults also involved where they have their own teams? Or? Well, no, it, it, it is students. It is age, age research, basically. <laughs> I mean, and it's not restricted to students in a specific school or, or a school system. We have students all the way from homeschooling, private schools, and public schools. But it, do, it does cap at the, at the um, I guess it would be 18, I guess it would be a... You said the UAO was going to get their own, there was one with BEST and the other one? BEST and FIRST. Yeah, BEST is another platform of, of robotics. It's pretty cool, but... No, there, there is. No, there is. Actually, in the Alamo region, there's a lot of, um, not a lot, but there's a, several, ma many school districts that have actually institutionalized and made, made robotics or engineering part of their core cur curriculum. There's actually schools in San Antonio, well, apart from the magnet schools or the schools that are very specific, specific, I know at least a couple that within the school campus, they have an engineering center within there. And within the engineering center, this is a high school, it's not a college, they have the robotics section, and they have the whole environment there to, to create that STEM, STEM program. So it is, yes, there are programs that are institutionalized. Also, it's, it's, oh, there's other schools that are implemented, but since it's a very project-oriented learning, it's not a, that you can sit in a classroom and can learn this as robotics. This is more of a project. You've got to do a project, you've got to build it, compete it, and then next year you, you repeat. 
So you could do it under, in a class format, but it's more suitable for a project base. But there are school districts. Down here, we're pretty fortunate uh, that, the, for example, the Harlingen School District and the Far School District. They're by far, uh, pardon the pun, the most advanced in terms of that thinking. Why? Because Dr. King in Far is just way ahead of the curve. He wants it to happen in the school district, and he's making it happen. We have Dr. Cavazos in Harlingen. He wants it to happen. It's going to happen. The other school districts either stay behind or are going to have to catch up to that. Now, we're all playing nice throughout the whole valley. We're, we're actually, this is a whole valley effort. So it's not one school district versus the other. This is a cooperation between all the, all the, all the efforts. Now, in particular, just so you know, the, the Harlingen School District Superintendent is, is on the board of FIRST in Texas, which is a, encompasses the whole all of Texas as, as of this year, which is that's going to help the region a lot. Any other questions? Uh, is there an involvement from Region 1 to try to get involved? Because Region 1 is the one that provides pretty much the technical uh, and services for the IEP. I know that they have um, a couple of programs related to entrepreneurship. It, it almost seems like like there's, a, there's always been, sorry if I'm venting a little bit, but it always seems like there's this disconnect, right, between the admin, the ed teachers, and even the technical uh, support, like the mentorship. Is, is what's, what's lacking? Uh, what's, what's, gonna, what's gonna create that like, cohesion between? Because you can have these pockets that are doing it, but what, what is gonna motivate the region to take up the challenge they're doing? Well, I think there's a couple things that we, we need to look at. We have to create the space. We, you have to create the, the, the epicenter of where that's gonna happen or put the face on, on what you're going to do. And once you have that, then you can have everybody gravitate to it and, and say, okay, we're doing it here and we're, in, we're inclusive. And that's the second part, which is the, the, the key part is being inclusive, not saying I did it in my little niche or I did it over here and I'm going to pe compete against you or, or, or I'm, I'm going to get the, the funding from whatever foundation. No, 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 it has to be coordinated. Let, let's get together and let's coordinate this. Part of our strategy coming down here is we first thing was to create the events and create the, 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 the movement. Our second step now is going out and reaching out, and we're going reaching out academia, which is uh, UT, SDC, et cetera, all that, uh, reaching out to um, well, academia, but on the, on, the, on, the, on the school level itself, getting the school districts, region one, and all that kind of on, on, on the same page with, with us. And the third step is, uh, for example, like SDMA or the private industry which is going to end up being the, the mentors slash supporters of all this. So there's a lot of moving parts, and we're hoping to, to be able to be the catalyst for, for that, for that particular in this in first robotics. And hopefully, other programs will actually come in and join in the, in the, in the, in the fray on this. We're, again, it's not exclusive. It's not exclusionary either. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome.